The temple of Siti I is considered to be among the very important uh, structures located at the necropolis of Abydos. This temple was begun by King Siti I, one of the important kings who ruled Egypt during the 19th dynasty and finished by his son and successor King Ramesses II. In fact, this uh, structure was mostly built out of fine white limestone and is considered to be one of the most impressive funerary structures in the history of ancient Egypt. During the 19th dynasty, King Siti I chose to build his temple at the necropolis of Abydos as he wanted to give Abydos back its glory, being the uh, cult center of god Osiris after it was totally overshadowed during the reign of King Akhenaten. Siti I began to build uh, this magnificent temple out of uh, mostly fine white limestone not only to all gods of Egypt, as he wanted to glorify them after they were totally denied during the reign of King Akhenaten, but also to all former kings of Upper and Lower Egypt, as he wanted to establish his divine right to the throne as a descent of these kings, since his father, Ramesses I, was of low birth and had been raised to office by Herem Thus, this temple was made for the gods and kings of Upper and Lower Egypt. King Siti I wanted to choose a fine location at the necropolis of Abydos to build his new structure. And so, he found a location that was the place of an earlier temple for worshipping god Osiris, which made this particular location a sacred one. Not only that, but at this, at this location there was a processional way. And so this particular location was ideal for building his new temple. His new funerary temple was known as the Joyful Temple of Millions of Years of the King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Min Ma'at Ra. This temple has two unusual features. The first feature that it takes the inverted L shape as it was built on two axes. The main axis, which forms the long leg of the L, runs from east to west. As for the southern wing or the second axis, which forms the short leg of the L, runs from north to south. Not only that, but the second feature is that this temple had seven shrines. The normal thing is for a temple to have only one shrine, but the temple of Siti I had seven, as it was not only dedicated for the worshipping of Siti I himself, but to seven different deities. These were Isis, Osiris, Horus, Petah Soker, Nefertum, Rahorokhti, and God Amun. This slide shows the plan of the temple of Siti I. And as you can see, it takes the inverted L shape. The long L forms the main axis, which runs from east to west, while the short leg of the L forms the second axis, or the southern wing, which runs from north to south. Other than the inverted L shape, this temple is dedicated to seven different deities. The slide here represents the first two of them. The deity on the left is god Amun-Ra, who is identified by the two feathers above his head. Right in front of him is the second deity, which is god ra hur -Ohti. He is identified by the falcon head and the solar disk above his head. This slide shows two more deities, and these are Nefertum, represented on the left, identified by the lotus flower above his head, while on the right is a representation of God Peteh Soccer, a combination between God Peteh and God Soccer. He is represented in the mummified form with the Shuti crown above his head that is formed by the solar disk, two horns, and two feathers. Peteh Soccer became very popular during the New Kingdom. As for this slide, it represents the last three deities. The one on the left is a representation of God Horus who is identified by the double crown above his head and with the falcon head. As for the other picture, it has a representation of two deities, 
God Osiris, who's shown in the mummified form, seated with the at of crown above his head and holding the uh, royal insignia, the crook and the flail, as well as the wasp scepter. And behind him is a representation of the last goddess among the seven deities. And this is God, uh, goddess Isis, who is identified by the throne above her head. In this temple, two types of rituals were performed. The first type are the daily rituals, which are rituals performed for the deities twice a day, once at dawn and once at dusk. As for the second type of ritual, it is the ancestors or the funerary ritual, which was only done inside the shrine of King Siti I being the dead king. This temple was built inside out, meaning that King Siti I started the temple by building the seven shrines, followed by the second and then the first hypostyle hall. He also added the additional chambers that form what is known as the southern wing or the short leg of the L. As for Ramesses II, who completed the temple of his father, he actually built the rams, two pylons, two open courts and the two porticos. This temple is considered to be symmetrical to the seven shrines. Also the storage chambers and residential area for priests fill the area between the southern wing and the main axis of the temple. This slide here is an overview of the temple of City the First representing the main axis and the southern wing. Between them is the area highlighted by the blue arrow, which represents the storage chambers and the residential area for priests. This slide is showing the uh, plan of the Temple of City the I, uh, highlighting the parts built by Ramesses II and those built by City the I. Notice the green arrows shows the part built by Ramesses II, while the red arrow shows the parts built by City the I. Ramesses II visited the temple of Abydus after the death of his father Siti I to find that it was incomplete. And so he decided to finish his, the temple of Siti I by making new additions to the temple. Thus, these additions are representing what Ramesses II added to the temple. These were the first pylon, the first open court and the first portico. The second pylon, the second open court and the second portico which he actually built and decorated. Ramesses II mostly used sandstone, unlike City I, who mostly used limestone. As for the decoration, Ramesses II used sunk relief, while City I used high relief. Thus, one could differentiate between the work made by City I and that made by Ramesses II not only through the type of stone used, but also through the technique of art adopted. The slide here represents what is known as high relief, which is the technique of art adopted by City the First. As for this one, it represents the technique of art adopted by Ramesses II, which is totally done in sunk relief. This plan here shows the additions that were made by King Ramesses II to the temple of his father, Siti I. The blue arrow represents the part that is totally ruined nowadays. As for the red arrow, it represents the original facade of the temple as it was originally built by Siti I. The slide here shows what you're going to see when you visit the temple nowadays. It shows the second ram leading to the first portico nowadays in ruins, which in turn leads to the second pylon, also in ruins. Then it leads to the remains of the second open court, and at the end of the open court you're going to see the third ram, which leads to the second portico made by King Ramesses II, and the original facade of the temple as it was made by City I. When Ramesses II completed the temple, it started by the first pylon, which he actually built out of sandstone. It consisted of two towers approached by a staircase. These towers were decorated by his battle scenes. Nowadays, this pylon is totally destroyed. 
except for some blocks of the interior face of the southern tower. After passing through the gateway of the pylon, you reach the first open court, also made by King Ramesses II out of sandstone and nowadays in ruins. The walls of this court were was also decorated by battle scenes of Ramesses II. To the northern and southern sides of this court are two circular basins, used for purification of the worshippers in this temple. Near the northern basin, one can still see a deep well, which indicates the function of both basins. At the back of the court is a flight of steps that leads to the first portico, the roof of which was supported by 12 pillars of limestone and sandstone. These pillars were once decorated by Osirite statues of King Ramesses II. The back of the first portico leads to the second pylon also built by King Ramesses II out of sandstone, consisting of two towers. Nowadays, completely damaged, except for some blocks of the interior face of the northern and the southern tower. The northern tower was decorated by names and figures of the daughters of Ramesses II, while the southern tower shows the names and figures of his sons. As for the second open court, which was also built by Ramesses II out of sandstone, it is decorated by scenes showing him adoring different deities. At the back of the court is the third ram that leads to the second portico, whose roof is supported by 12 pillars made out of limestone and resting on sandstone bases. The sides of these pillars show Ramesses II adoring different deities. The slide represents one of the 12 pillars forming the second portico showing Ramesses II adoring different deities, all made in sunk relief, which was the technique adopted by Ramesses II in decoration. Ramesses II not only made additions to the temple, but he also made some alterations. Originally, the back wall of the second portico, as built by City I, had seven entrances, to correspond with the seven shrines. But Ramesses II altered them as he blocked five of these entrances, leaving only two. The one that corresponds with the shrine of Amun-Ra and that that corresponds with the shrine of Osiris. It should be noted that the back wall of the portico was erected by City I, forming his original facade. But the pillars were erected by Ramesses II. As for the second alteration, Ramesses II redecorated the original facade of his father by his own scenes, which are all done in sunk relief. The slide here shows the 12 pillars forming the second portico erected by Ramesses II. As for the back wall of the portico, it forms the original facade of the temple, as erected by City I. Nowadays, you can only see two of the seven entrances as the rest were blocked by Ramesses II. The southwest wall represents Ramesses II making offerings in the form of Mad to God Osiris, behind whom stands Isis and City I. The scene is surrounded by text showing prayers to God Osiris. As for the second scene on the wall, it is Francis II raising his hand in front of a dedicatory text, which is considered to be the longest during his reign. This dedicatory text gives important historical facts about how Ramesses II was chosen by his father to become his co-regent. Not only that, but it also talks about the completion of the temple when Ramesses II visited the temple of his father during his first renal year to find that it was totally unfinished. As for the northwestern wall, it is also decorated by three scenes. The first scene shows Horus Isis followed by City I in procession. The second scene shows Ramesses II standing near the sacred tree of Heliopolis, known as the Isha tree, receiving the royal insignia from god Rahur Ochti identified by the solar disk above his head. Rahur Ochti is followed by god Osiris. As for god Peteh, he is represented while recording the names of Ramesses II on the tree leaves. As for Tot, he is recording his jubilees. The slide shows part of the second scene that we are talking about, showing Rahur Ochti with the solar disk above his head, 
giving the royal insignia to King Ramesses II, who is wearing the Khepresh crown. Behind Rahorohti, parts of Osiris could still be seen. The whole scene is made in sunk relief and was once painted. The last and final scene on the northwestern wall of the facade shows King Ramesses II being led into the palace of his father by Horus and Khunum. This scene is inscribed by the words Introduction of the King into the mansion of his father Rahorohti.